Welcome everybody to the press conference of the Have Nots here in Tallinn, here at the 20th Black Knights Film Festival. Um, I have the pleasure to welcome uh, the equipe of the film. Uh, to my right is the screenwriter Mona Kino, uh, followed by the director Florian Hofmeister and the producer, uh, producer Titus Kleinberg. Welcome to you all. Um, the film is a, a very multi-layered one, based on a very multi-layered novel. So it's hard in a way to sum it up in a nutshell. You can start maybe from saying that's, that it's a film uh, about a couple torn down by guilt, brought together at a very crucial moment in their lives and a very crucial um, historical moment, uh, that is 9-11. A friend of theirs uh, goes to uh, the United States instead of the guy we are talking about, who will later come together with the girl, and he dies in the attacks on the, on the Twin Towers. And that is exactly the moment when after a long time, uh, the two people we are talking about come back together. So from the very moment, they, uh, they have a past that is a tragedy and they try to cope by moving from um, Germany to London and uh, make a new start. Um, that is the very core, you could say, the bare bones of the story and the, uh, the, the wonderful um, complexity of these films come into play. We have a lot of uh, historical backdrops, one of it uh, being, as I said, the 9-11 uh, disaster, another one being uh, the work of um, the male lead that we find. He works in the field of restitution uh, as a consultant which is a very complicated topic. And then we have the complexities of the different relationships that both have in Germany and uh, later on. So, complicated framework, as I said, very, very renowned novel. It won the German Book Prize in 2006. And I wanted to ask you very simply and very plainly where the story started for you. I mean, uh, first thing first, when did uh, you actually get hands on the novel to try to make it into a film? I think this is a question for all of you. Uh, I guess I'm the uh, first one to answer that because I was the one that read the book first. And um, that was in 2005, 2006, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, just historically, it was quite interesting that uh, Germany, as, as we all know, had basically taken in 2001 had taken a step back from the, you know, they didn't follow the American politics into, into the war, so there was quite a feeling of distance to those historical events in Germany. So when I read the book first, and um, it was, it was uh, really interesting how a German author would actually uh, tackle that topic of distance mm -hmm. and make it present into a German couple with their, you know, all-day routines. And that was the first thing that really struck me. Um, it's, it's a novel that is, uh, basically consists of um, inner monologues of the four main characters. So it is, when you read it first, you might think virtually impossible to adapt it. <laughs> so I took the book and gave it to her and said, I think it's an amazing piece of writing. Would you think that you could write a script out of that? That was the starting point for me. So then uh, I uh, pick up. <laughs> the question. Um, when Florian um, gave me the book, um, it was kind of five years after 9-11, and uh, the first I, what, what came up into my mind was a sentence um, of a cameraman I was working with uh, on 9-11, on, on the day of 9-11, and uh, he was a kind of an angry man, And uh, but when it came to the point when we realized um, that what we saw on TV uh, accidentally, um, because the um, camera um, tried to get a connection to um, the, uh, what's video that? the video assist, the video assist, and um, he, he he became quite warm-hearted in his um, uh, voice, and he said, um, "From now on, everything that value uh, that's a value in our." Um, Western capitalistic way of life um, has no validation any longer. And then I said, well, five years later, maybe it's a good point to explore if the sentence is still true or um, if it's um, 
Yeah, if it's still true, mm -hmm. and what um, happened, uh, how, how much influence uh, it has on our lives. Art needs distance, simply put, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And so then we kind of took off uh, for a few years by ourselves, um, and then uh, we had uh, something like probably the fourth draft or something, and then we gave it to him. Mm -hmm. So the option, you optioned the, the book already back we then? Did, yes, oh, we yeah. did, sorry. Okay. So the course of things was, uh, when Mona said, yes, she'd be interested, we contacted um, the publishing company. Back at that time, we had just uh, won uh, the Silver Leopard and Lucano with our first film. <clears throat> so uh, it was a bit of an unusual step of the publishing company that they would actually allow us to option the rights as private people. And mm -hmm. Katharina Hacker, the, uh, the novelist, kind of uh, gave us quite a big, uh, you know, um, how, would you, uh, like, how would you say, uh, quite a big, thumb, like a first a credit, first up. Uh, so we, we optioned the rights um, and we started to work. And um, then after a few other things that happened, finally we met Titus uh, and um, we started to actively, who actively started to produce the film. Well, you're, you're uh, of course uh, famous for doing a lot of co-productions co in Germany and to liking complicated or political very uh, um, uh, projects with a clear stance. But uh, this was, I think, at this moment, possibly a, a very difficult task for financing or was it easy? Uh, which, at which point did it come in f uh, to you? No, we, we try to co-produce the film, of mm. course. Uh, it's a natural co-production between Germany and, and the UK. Uh, but everybody who has tried to work with the UK on, on a, a European level has, finds out that it's virtually impossible to do it. I mean, the two systems are so different. And it's very hard. It was also very hard to find uh, money on the uh, British side for minority co-production. Um, although the subject, I think, is, was very interesting for them. And the reason why I picked it up, apart from Florian and Mona uh, being the ones who came to me uh, with, with the project, was exactly the sentence uh, that Mona just referred to in the beginning. Um, the, the sense that uh, after 9-11, our values in the Western world were, were not valid anymore. And these, this couple, uh, instead of facing the new reality after 9-11, goes into sort of a hibernation uh, 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 and is trying to block out the world around them rather than confronting it and, and, and taking a stance uh, in a way. And this is, uh, this is what I thought was very interesting about the project and I think it is, with, unfortunately with every day now, it's getting more and more interesting again. Um, uh, how do we how we, do we position ourselves in a world that is, becomes increasingly more difficult with people in power that are increasingly more uh, irrational, acting more irrational uh, on both sides uh, um, of the, uh, the frontiers. So th this was, uh, basically this was, mm, my, my, the, the inter my interest in finding an answer to this question was uh, my, um, so I, this is why I decided to, yeah. to get on board of the project, apart from Florian and Mona as, as, as the key players in this project. You talked about the fact that the book is based on inner monologue. So <coughs> in the first stance, you have like a, a task that's, uh, that's really hard to fulfill you. And you created wonderful monologues, which I told you half a year ago, uh, or uh, wonderful dialogue, I mean, uh, um, half a year ago. And uh, the structure, the structure. Let's come back. What did you emphasize from the book? Which parts did you uh, emphasize to find kind of an essence? Um, oh, this, again, a question to you all. Um, yeah, maybe you start and I add yeah. what I have to add. If um, I have to add. Um, <laughs> well, I think the interesting bit about the book is that it's a, a narration that kind of steers away from traditional plot. You know, so you, it, it, in a way, it constructs uh, almost separated, disconnected elements. You know, uh, and puts these people together, and that creates within the head of the reader creates a very strong atmosphere of the time. So um, uh, I felt that uh, that is in essence filmic. 
you know, because in a film, in essence, to me, is basically independent elements put together and they create a picture inside of your head. So when we try to start and find a, uh, something that would do this novel justice, we, of course, we want, we, you had to be careful to stay truthful to that way of her narration and at the same time create a form of flow that an audience would follow. Because of course you sit in a cinema and it has to take you, at a certain point at least, has to take you with you. So I think that was the two elements. So there was a, uh, when the way we worked together is of course Mona would write and I would read and we would talk together and then when Tito's entered we all would read. And so that was always from my point of view the emphasis to find a structure that it leaves a lot of things open, open enough at the same time streamlines it so that in essence it becomes a bit more about the couple, you know, sooner or later. Uh, that was, I guess, other elements, for example, if I talk about your work, I would say that uh, there's a big scene in a gallery where there's a, 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 the gallerist a, is having a little speech uh, at the time of 9-11 and that scene in essence does not exist in the novel. Um, so it was uh, something that Mona did because she thought that that scene would sum up many political views that Katharina did express in her writing. So some of the adaptation was very, very close. Some of it is something that is more like an answer to, uh, what, to the novel, mm -hmm. the voice, an echo. Um, yeah, when, 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 when I found out that um, uh, the, 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 the narration um, I want to bring on screen is about the two people, Isabel and Jacob, um, I very much put my focus on their inner process, not so much on their inner monologues. And um, uh, yeah, it became clear it's not, it, it won't never be a multi-plot. Um, and um, so uh, the, 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 the possibility just to focus on that inner process, uh, process of two persons um, uh, was quite, um, uh, how to say, I'm so sorry for my English. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Ich äh, habe gerade den Faden verloren. I, I just, uh, I, I, I've lost the let red line, sorry. Well, let me pick up on a very specific thing Florian said in the beginning. This is about uh, the distance a German couple has mm -hmm. towards these times. You could say in this couple, embodied especially in, in the male, in Jacob, uh, he's also a very international person, a global person, a traveler all around the globe without a home. So simultaneously, both of them, uh, 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 form part of this, let's say, new global bourgeois elite that seems to travel all around and they are specifically German at the same time. Um, uh, it has to be a German couple. What would you say, would, could, could you expand in a way what's specifically German there? I wouldn't say that it's typical German how they uh, behave. I think it's kind of, if you um, just want to get, um, uh, if, if you just want to start your life all over again um, and avoid um, going into the pain of loss and um, uh, 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 your new big love or whatever, um, and you use your, uh, the patterns you've learned in your childhood, you know, um, I think this is a um, um, worldwide um, um, kind of a habit um, that you um, then kind of crash uh, onto the wall, you know. Mm -hmm. Florian, would you like to add something? You were no, I, I see differently. I actually mm -hmm. think they are really German. Me too. So no, but I think that's, that's sometimes also that would resemble the way we work together. Yeah. Because I think that what Mona brought to the script was like an, an, a will to actually very insightfully just try to explore the psychological uh, spaces of these characters where I think my point of view, and Kay also, you speak for yourself, is, is far more distant from the outside. And I do think that 
uh, that the way that um, they both interact, and especially the male character, uh, is associated with the uh, feeling of guilt, which is, I think, that's something that, Mike, what I say is the last, you kind of, you know, <laughs> you grew up in Germany, mm -hmm. you know, that's a very central topic mm -hmm. of uh, the German culture that I grew up in. So for me, his inability to, to uh, resolve that, because he can't live uh, a form of sorrow, um, that to me is very German. And I, I was actually interested in, and that's why I'm very grateful that was probably quite unique in Germany because it was a German co-production with the broadcasters associated. Uh, uh, um, they would normally not really allow a multi-language film. The film is shot in German and in English, so when they come to London, they all speak English. And I loved working, you know, having German actors speak with, you know, our accent and having... Uh, a, a linguistic misunderstanding. So to me, that is very much uh, a portrayal of a German generation that I have, uh, you know, I, I feel as well. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Another topic that's very German is the restitution topic, you know, talking about property that once belonged to victims of uh, former crimes, world war crimes, and, and, and uh, kind of uh, want to take a step further. Um, I, I think you um, intensified that uh, that um, a level of the novel as well, a bit or much? Uh, well, it's, it is probably the biggest difference. The film steps a bit short of uh, uh, of, of the novel in that in that particular side strand. I, I find because in, it's that's where literature is superior to a film in a way that the way that she can construct half a sentence, which sometimes might be a very long sentence, but she, she can wander off and she could describe uh, the novelist a, a scene at a table and you end up in 1930, you know, so as a trail of thought. And um, however, we always thought that it's very important for the film because it is an adaptation to stay truthful to her and we had to reduce it just to, you know, uh, to stay Balance. To balance, yeah, to balance essence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, it is, uh, as with all these characters in there, it is expectations, and there's a very central line that uh, is in the novel that we, we fail due to our expectations, and each character has an expectation, and within the restitutional uh, story, uh, the woman has the expectation to get the house back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or she expects, actually she doesn't, she says she wants the house back, she, but she expects a certain emotional um, release and a closure by uh, trying to claim a property back, but she will never get that closure, of mm -hmm. course, as mm -hmm. we know now. Well, finally, let's come to the imagery, of course. It's a wonderful film, and uh, you are uh, an acclaimed director of photography, having done a lot of films in between 2005, when you did Three Degrees Colder, your first work uh, as a director, up to now, when. Uh, you're now presenting internationally have nots. So, um, most simple question, but I think an important one uh, the black and white decision there. We were talking about distance. Is this also a matter of distance, of timelessness, to decide for black and white imagery in this case? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I thought that, um, I mean, there's, I think there's a difference, of course, a thousand different styles to make a film, but one I think very common and very strong. Uh, uh, a style currently is, of course, that the film, you know, starts and it will jump onto your lap and, you know, it will come over you with all your emotion. And this film, of course, doesn't do that. I think it's, it's deliberately a film that comes across quite quietly and you watch it at the beginning with a distance. So, because I think it was important that you can start thinking, thinking about the film and not that, you know, necessarily being overwhelmed by it. And I thought that the black and white would be a very like almost like a filter that then the more the film would go on it would then dissolve and suddenly you might you know in minute 15 you might not think about it anymore that was the main main agenda secondly um uh it was also i was very uh um i really wanted to sh be close to the protagonist physically close with the camera so that of course leads to a film that consists lots of close-ups or portraits. Yeah. And I thought that there still should be a cinematic value in those portraits that go, should go away from realism. Because I think in an ideal world, a film, um, if it's just rooted in realism, you know, I could go out the door there and I see, as far as I can see, real life in, 
Tallinn, but I think if you go into a cinema, it's interesting if you actually, if, it take, if there's more like a naturalistic approach that takes me uh, into something that then, when I leave the cinema, changes me subtly, you know, that's, and I think that's something that black and white does very, very wonderfully. How easy or hard was it for you to do, uh, have Robert Binal just do his work and not interfere with the imagery? Uh, I mean, this is, uh, you, ha you have a DP, another DP on yeah. the project. So. No, it's, uh, that's not a problem at all. I actually really enjoy that. I do yeah. enjoy, I enjoy the collaboration as a, uh, a cinematographer when I work with other directors. I, I compare the change of role a little bit to an actor. You know, because if I work as a cinematographer, I give a director my whole creativity and uh, 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 they take it and then they turn it into something. We get challenged or, you know. And as a director, uh, I give myself to the film. That's a whole different, mm -hmm. different mindset. And I find it quite important that, especially on a tight budget and under these constraints that you don't micromanage certain elements. And I really enjoy the collaboration with uh, somebody. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One has to say that it's extremely easy to collaborate with Troy. Huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Uh, as a director of photography, it just came to my mind, you of course worked also with Terence Davis and he's a master of exploring the depth of, of human existence, mm -hmm. of character. And I just wanted to ask you, uh, what, what do you think you have, what kind of lesson maybe have you learned from working with him that probably went on to, to infuse your work here as a director? Uh, Difficult one? No, 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 not at all. Uh, personal one. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's actually quite simple. When I, um, I met Terence at a point when I had shot quite a lot of um, work in the United, United Kingdom, where I work mostly as a, a DOP. And um, it is, uh, it was, you know, it's quite a, a film industry actually. So I did a lot of commercial projects, you know, big television. Uh, and Terence is somebody who kind of takes you back to the very root of filmmaking. You know, he's, he's somebody who will only shoot a shot if he feels it. And of course, that is his feeling, not mine, because I'm just helping him or I'm working with him. But to be brought back and be reminded that this is the core thing about filmmaking, that was just beautiful, you know, it was a big reminder and gave me a lot of strength um, uh, um, to uh, go through this process, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just because you, you tend, when you work, you tend to forget that, you know, we all get caught up and it's a mobile phone and, you know, and, oh, and <laughs> nice finance no and things. So, yeah, but to be there and say, okay, what do we want to do? And this is, uh, uh, the, I only can do what I want, uh, what I feel. And this is, Terence is the best at that. Okay, okay. Well, uh, you <laughs> definitely get the sense with, uh, with the half nuts that the, the camera is just rolling when you are like, the, when this is the moment, be, maybe best exemplified by a scene with Julia Jentsch uh, in London when she's really in an aggressive situation, when she's uh, confronted with uh, 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 mm -hmm. a lot of aggressivity. That, that was my, uh, I mean, I can never forget that scene. And, and um, this brings us to preparation with your wonderful actors, Sebastian Simler, Julia Jentsch. Um, very openly, I mean, this, um, the preparation with them uh, for no, let me, let me make it a bit more direct. He's, he's closed in himself. Mm -hmm. She's getting, uh, it seems that her inner life is, uh, her, her, her skin is getting thinner and thinner throughout the film. So uh, how can you prepare for that? Uh, <laughs> well, I think as a director, you, or my main, and my main interest is when I direct is of course working with the actors. And I think you create a feeling of trust. That's my main agenda. And within that trust, you create intimacy. You know, that's, that's, I think you, you, you invite them to be themselves in a way. What, within that specific scene, for example, we're talking about but domestic, oh, sorry. No, no. Sorry. And I think I have to think, say sorry. that, uh, it's, a, it's a shame, sorry, <laughs> that Julia isn't here because yeah. she is, currently uh, working as, an, a as a nurse. <laughs> she's of course not working as a nurse, but she's uh, playing, a, playing a nurse okay. in a home for the elderly. Um, because she is, I have to say that absolute world class. You know, she's somebody who can absolutely, absolutely understands that 
that process that you just uh, described so well uh, to actually, you can see physically when her, when her skin gets thinner. You know, so at least in, in, in this film, that was, I think we were meeting and in that way, that was very, very beautiful. And she's a very, she takes everything from the heart. I haven't opened up. Uh, if you have any questions, please, uh, please ask. After having seen the film, after having uh, been in the screening, um, Titus, there's no question. Um, this was shot actually in North Rhine-Westphalia, in Berlin, and in London. You said it was, it, uh, of course, it was shot in Great Britain, but without uh, actually be, being a co-production. So, um, what parts were actually shot in London? The, the flat, was it shot completely in London, for example? No, the, the flat is a, a studio built. It's in a studio in, in, in the suburbs of Cologne. Um, the things we shot in London are all the exterior shots in London and some uh, interiors where we, that we needed, where we needed a direct link to the outside. Yeah. But apart from that, nothing is shot uh, in, in London. We, we had four or five days of shooting in London. Um, on a budget of, I don't know, 45,000 euros. And um, the rest was, the majority of the film was shot in, in Cologne. And then we had uh, uh, roughly a week in, in Berlin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, so all in all, how many days? Like more or less? 20, uh, 27, 26. 26, yeah. 26 shooting. Incredible, days. okay. Um, and then comes a long process of, uh, of editing. And I think it was built up again, in a, in a way, in the editing process. It has to be as it is a, a film of atmosphere, and you have to really juggle with the elements to find the right equilibrium, isn't it? Can I just say something uh, before you answer? Mm -hmm. um, this whole film was, uh, as you said, rebuilt and rebuilt and rebuilt in the editing room. But it was, it was um, Florian and the editor, Katrin, um, that were sitting in the editing room uh, trying to assemble the film and trying to get it, you know, get it together, this beast, in, in, in one way or another. And I went there on the, uh, on the day, the, uh, or the day after the attacks at Bataclan um, happened. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the whole material had a different meaning again. Mm -hmm. it, it was quite amazing throughout the film how the film changed. Because it, it, on the surface, it's a boy meets girl story, you know, very simple uh, love story. Underneath that surface, there's so much um, that is linked to what is happening in the world that somehow I think this was also why it was so difficult to find the right balance in the film. So, this is where you. 